Hello YouTube, I am Arnd Peter, and today I would like to walk you through four tips on making a basic level selection system in GameMaker. So I've already made a simple game, I'm going to go and walk you through that, and then we can talk about how we can apply those tips to this game. For this game I have five levels, and in each level the goal is to find the key. So I search this box, no key, no key, what about this one? <gasps> There's a key! I find the key, and then it opens the door, and there, I beat the level. I can try the next one. Uh, is the key in the same place? No? What out there? No? No? Last one? Yes, key! Alright, I beat the level. Okay, that's how this game is set up. And the way I implement this is the most basic way I could think of to make a level system. And we're going to call this tip zero, which is hard coding the rooms. So here I have five buttons. Each button, when you click it, it brings you to a different room, and the rooms are hard-coded here in the click, the left-pressed event. So, tip number one is to move these variables to the create event rather than hard-coding them in place. So here, I actually have two variables that are different for each button. I have the room, which is different for each button, and in the draw event, I also have different text that's drawn on each button. Semicolon. And next, I'm going to show you what it would look like if I move these to the create event and done. So in the creation event in each button I've created two variables my level which indicates the room the button will point to and also text which indicates what's drawn on the button and then in left pressed I refer to my level when I want to go to the next room and in the draw I refer to the text variable when I draw the text. So why would you want to move everything into variables within the creation event you might ask. Well, the main thing is is that doing this makes it easier to update your system. So whenever I want to change which level this button points to, I can go to the creation event and change it here rather than dig through the code and find all the places where I'm referring to it. So it creates one place where I can update everything anytime I make a change and that saves time and it's less error prone. You'll find that making the system easier to update is an underlying theme to all the tips I'll be giving. Another thing that moving things to the creation event does is it highlights patterns in your code. So in this case, after moving the variables into the creation event, if we look at our left pressed event, if I look at it for but button 1 and if I look at it for button 2, you notice that moving to the variable makes them exactly the same. And that's actually the case for both our left pressed and our draw event. By pulling the variables into the creation event, these are exactly the same. Which means we have redundant code. And moving with the theme of making things simpler to maintain, if you have redundant code that you can move to one place rather than having it many places, that means less code and thus easier to maintain. Less, less code to cause bugs, less code to modify or to make changes, easier to maintain. So this leads us to tip number two, which is to use parenting. In this case, we can use parenting to move this redundant code to one place. So I'll go ahead and do that next. So I have created another button. I just called it O button without having a level name attached to it. And I've copied over the left pressed and the draw event the same way as they were in the other buttons, but it does not have a creation event. And now if I've looked at other buttons, I have deleted the left pressed and draw event. It still has the creation event, and the key is is that it's parented to the O button that I made, the parent button. So that means that it will any events that the child button does not have, it'll copy from the parent button. So now I have all these five child buttons that are copying these left press and draw events from the parent button and this way when I want to make updates I can do that just in the parent button. Cool, very cool. Okay, next tip. So now these child buttons are just creation events. GameMaker has a very handy feature for updating creation events from the room editor. So I'll, I'm going to go ahead and do that next, and the cool thing is is that I'll be able to delete pretty much all these buttons by doing this. And the buttons have been deleted. The there's I see there's only the parent button here, and if you look over here in the bottom of the room editor, and I hover over these buttons, you see that they're all the parent button. And furthermore, if I press C, as noted here, I press C, they'll all be highlighted. I have added creation code to all of these. If I right click on it and say creation code, this is the code that was in the creation event, but now I have specified it in the room editor, and it's cleaner. I like this solution, I think it's handy adding things to the room like this, but 
it's still a little clunky. If I want to update the structure of my or the order of my levels, I'll need to go into the room editor. I'll need to update through these. It'll be much cleaner if I could do it in one place. That leads us to the next tip, tip number four, which is to centralize your variables. I have created O level control object. In the creation of O level control, I've created five variables corresponding to each of the levels. And in the menu, I have updated the creation code to point to O level controls level one variable in, for this particular level instead of having it being written here. All right, I actually forgot something in the original tutorial, so this is a retroactive interjection. So this actually won't work because in the creation code, a level control doesn't exist in the room. So you have to add that to the room. So we do that. But even if we do that, we'll still get a bug. So this is a tricky thing in Game Maker, which is why I want to go and fix it live. So it says the variable level one does not exist. But here in the room, we clearly said, Oh, level control is level one, and in level control, we made level one should be fine. The problem is, is that whether or not this works would depend on whether O level control is made first or if these buttons were made first. We may want to make sure level control is made first so that its variables exist when these buttons refer to it. And the way I usually do that is first off, I make it persistent. So in level control, I make it persistent. This means it'll exist across all rooms, and you probably want this anyway because these var these variables are useful across all rooms. And then I create a room in the beginning where I only make objects like level control that contain like global information. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call it, it's usually the splash screen. So I'm gonna call it room splash, and then I'm gonna create it in here. Okay, so we got that. And as another side note, I need to make it match the dimensions of my other rooms. And be sure to delete it from the menu once you've created it in Splash. And then as a last note in level control, um, I need to once once these are created, we're ready. We'll be ready to go to the next room. So I'm gonna just go add a room go to next in this script in the creation of level level control. Okay, now it should work. Let's move on. Okay. Now if I play, and then it works. All right, back to the back to the tutorial let's talk about why this is this is so cool all right now we've got our level um, our level information centralized everything about the order of our levels is now defined in this one script um, in, in O level control so this is super useful when you're working in teams so if you have if you're working in a team and um, somebody doesn't know how to use game maker necessarily they can just open this fi the this file without even opening game maker and they can make edits to the room structure here and it's really uh, super simple to do that because it's you know it's all in one place this as well as all the previous uh, tips all make it just easier to update uh, your level system and those are my four tips to making a basic level selection system in game maker if you found these interesting and you'd like to hear hear more, I have also uploaded a video called Six Tips to Making an Advanced Level Selection System in Game Maker. So if that's like something you might enjoy, go ahead and check it out. If not, I'll go ahead and see you next time.